If you are filing partnership taxes for the first time this year, this video is exactly what you need. Don't you go anywhere. You're going to love the conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now, let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to speak to you about filing partnership taxes for the first time. And uh, let me give you an overview so we have a clear understanding of what we are speaking about. So, what types of companies can elect partnership taxation? Well, partnerships of all flavors. I'm speaking about general partnerships, limited partnerships, limited liability partnerships can enjoy partnership taxation. And LLCs with more than one owner are also automatically taxed as partnerships. So how are partnerships really taxed? Well, a business with two or more owners is automatically taxed as a partnership. You can file partnership taxes using the, the, the steps I will be talking to you in today's conversation. I'll be talking to you about, okay? So just please keep in mind so that by default, a business with two or more owners is called a partnership. Like a sole proprietorship, partnerships are not legal entities and do not require a state filing to get started. Most partnerships form through agreements that outline how the partners will split profits and liabilities. Okay, You can further formalize a partnership by becoming a limited liability partnership, which turns your business into a legal entity that shields owners' personal assets from business debts. Okay? So the bottom line here is the partnerships are therefore pass-through entities where partners report and pay income taxes based on their portion of a partnership income. For example, if you and I run a partnership where we split profits evenly, I would be responsible for paying tax on half of the business income through our personal tax returns. Unlike C corporations, partnerships do not pay an entity level tax, no. So though partnerships pay no business income taxes, they file information return, so that's the form 1065 each year to relay income and deductions information to the IRS. So partnership taxation is not reserved for partnerships only. So limited liability companies may elect partnership taxation among other options. So really important. You don't pay business income taxes. So the partnership does not pay income taxes at the business level because of the, the pass through entity process. But you have to pay income taxes at the personal level through uh, the information that is recorded on your schedule K1. OK, very important. Let's talk about the importance of records. So this is your first year filing partnership taxes. You have to have supporting business documents. There is a constellation of documents that you need to gather to make sure that the, uh, the tax filing process goes smoothly. Okay. So for example, we have gross receipts. So gross receipts are the income you receive from your business. So you should keep supporting documents that show the amounts and sources of your gross receipts. Okay. Documents for gross receipts include the following. You have cash register tapes, deposit information, so cash and credit sales, receipt books, invoices, and forms 1099 miscellaneous. And you have to think about purchases. So purchases are the items you buy and resell to customers. So if you are a manufacturer or producer, this includes the cost of all raw materials or parts purchased for manufacturer into finished products. Your supporting documents should identify the payee, the amount paid, proof of payment, the date incurred, and include a description of the item to show that the amount was for purchases. Documents for purchases include the following. So you have canceled checks or other documents reflecting proof of payment, electronic funds transferred. You have cash register, tape receipts, credit card receipts and, the, and statements, invoices. Remember, a combination of supporting documents may be needed to substantiate 
all elements of a purchase. Those are important elements because if the IRS were to audit your business, you want to make sure that you have the proper documentation to substantiate all the, uh, all the write-offs, all the deductions that you were taking in your, uh, in your Form 1065. What about expenses? So expenses are, are the costs that you incur other than purchases to carry on your business. Your supporting documents should identify the payee, the amount paid, proof of payment, the date incurred, and include a description of the of the item purchased or services received that shows the amount was for a business expense. So documents for expenses include the following. So you have uh, canceled checks or other documents reflecting proof of payments, electronic funds transferred, cash register tape receipts, account statements, credit card receipts and statements, invoices, and I just want to say that a combination of supporting documents may be necessary to substantiate all elements of the expense. In addition, you also need travel, transportation, entertainment, and gift expenses. You need to have a documentation that substantiates those expenses. Now, this is very important because the IRS audits this area very, very carefully. Okay, if you deduct travel, entertainment, gift or transportation expenses, you must be able to prove, in other words, substantiate certain elements of expenses. And uh, so if you need more information, we have covered this on other shows, but if you are interested, you can go and read publication 463, travel, entertainment, gift and car expenses. But if not, just uh, drop us a comment, a comment below and we can certainly link you to, uh, we can refer you to the video that we did on this specific topic. You can just go and watch the video. It's only 15 or 20 minutes and you'll get all the info that you need. What about assets? So assets are the property such as machinery and furniture that you own and use in your business. So you must keep records to verify certain information about your business assets. Okay, so if this is your first time filing partnership, partnership taxes, you gotta keep your partnership assets in check so you need records to compute the annual depreciation and the gain or loss when you sell the assets so documents for assets should show the following when and how you acquire the assets the purchase price the cost of any improvement section 179 deduction taken and this can be uh, accumulated okay so so far deductions taken for depreciation deductions taken for casualty losses such as losses resulting from uh, fires or storms, how you use the assets, when and how you disposed of the assets, the selling price, the expenses of the sale, okay, those are really important. And th the following documents may, may show this information, purchase and sale invoices, real estate closing documents, cancel checks or other documents that identify the payee, the amount and proof of payments or electronic funds transferred. So the IRS really pays attention to all those documents when it comes to proving the business asset that you have within the partnership. What about employment taxes? Well, there are specific employment tax records you must, you must keep. And you want to keep all records of employment for at least four years. That's the threshold. That's the minimum. At least four years. One thing that we have seen that really uh, works out really great is that if you have, uh, if you have outsourced your uh, payroll to a provider such as ADP they actually do all the all the work for you they have uh, the proof they actually archive in the cloud all, the, all of your records so that you don't have to do things yourself you don't have to uh, you know bother with that so this is a great opportunity you can think about that let's talk about the financials so you we are still having a conversation about filing partnership taxes for the first year for the first time this year and you want to take care of your financials you need to have you want to draft annual financial statements okay so before you embark on filing your business partnership taxes prepare the three or four basic financial statements so balance sheet income statement and statement of, and statement of cash flow and if you can add the statement of owners equity okay and so the information in this financial statements provides a basis for your tax software or tax professional to complete the filing so this is really important you, you don't have to do things yourself okay you can hire an ea an enrolled agent you can hire a cpa a certified public accountant you can hire a, uh, a an attorney a tax attorney okay to complete the tax filing for you 
anyway, th those persons don't, don't have to be certified either. They don't have to be credentialed. As long as they know what they're doing, it should be fine. Okay. So, you, so when we speak about a complete set of financial statements, you need to have those four. Sometimes people want to want to they want to actually um, use only three financial statements, but we like the four. In other you need in other words, you need to add the fourth one, the statement of owner's equity. So when we speak about balance sheet, we are speaking about what your assets, your business, your partnerships, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Okay. So when you hear the terms balance sheet, report on financial condition, statement of uh, financial position, those terms are interchangeable. Okay. Very important. And you also have to include your profit and loss. Profit and loss. That's the same thing as uh, income statement. That's where you show your revenue and uh, and uh, expenses. And uh, at the end, you show, you show your in your net income or net loss. You need to think about the statement of cash flows. Okay, this is where you put the uh, you put the cash flows from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, cash flow from financing activities. I'm just telling you all these things, but if you have no idea what I'm speaking about, it's it, it means that you need to hire someone to do that part of the job for you. Okay, and you also need to think about your owner's equity statements. This is also called the equity statements. So basically, it, it shows um, investors or, or the money that the partners have put into the into the money into the money <laughs> into the company. So all in all, those four financial statements are needed if you want to prepare a good set of uh, of uh, if you want to file your 10, your form ten sixty five and you also want to uh, transfer at the end the data onto the schedules K one that you will distribute to partners. Speaking of Form 1065, let's talk about Form 1065. Now, every partnership in the United States must prepare a federal partnership tax return on Eternal Revenue Service Form 1065. Okay, and on this form, you will be asked to provide the partnership's total income or loss. You will list deductions such as salaries, guaranteed payments to partners, rent, repairs, taxes, depreciation, and employee benefit programs, among other things. Your partnership's total, total income, less its deduction, it's basically its uh, ordinary business income. You will also need to fill out several forms 1065 schedules. You have schedules, Schedule B, which includes a series of questions about your partnership, from the, from the types of partners to ownership of corporate shares to types of distributions made. Schedule K is a schedule of income and expenses that forms the basis for the uh, K-1 forms you will issue to shareholders. Schedule, schedule L is a balance sheet. Some partnerships are also required to complete schedules M1, M2, and, M, and or M3. Okay, this is important. Now, remember that the return must be signed by a general partner. Very important. So when are, ta when are partnership tax returns due? Well, they are due on the 15th day of the third month after the company's year end. So calendar year partnerships, which are most common, must file Form 1065 by March 15th. Okay, remember, partnerships do not pay income tax. Business profits are taxed on, the, on their owner's personal return, which are due on April 15th. So you are submitting your partnership return by March 15th and making a business tax payment by April 15th. Okay, and you can also file an automatic six month business tax ex extension if you need more time to prepare your business tax return. However, and this is a big however, you are still required to pay your taxes by April 15th. Very important. Okay, so the, what, what I want to say here is that partnerships report revenue and the business tax deduction on Form 1065. Now, if you, you can actually say, you know what, I want to elect another, another form. In other words, I, I want to elect another uh, tax classification. So you can actually uh, go from your partnership, you can become an S Corp. And usually, if it, everything goes through Form 2253, okay, so you can elect S Corporation status or C Corporation status for that matter. I'll be right back. We're we'll to this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are also having a conversation about uh, filing partnership taxes for the first time this year. And I want to speak to you quickly about uh, Schedules K-1. 
The thing is you need to issue Schedule K-1 to each partner, okay? So Schedule K-1 is like an employee's Form W-2. So partnerships issue a Schedule K-1 to each partner to decrease each partner's share of business profit or losses. And partnerships report any taxable earnings a partner received during the year on a partner's K-1. And the two sections you will spend the most time filling are guaranteed payments, so that's, that's line 4A through 4C, and the partner's share of profits, line 1. And this is really important. And uh, a guaranteed payment is the closest thing to a salary for a partner. Guaranteed payments promise a partner a specific amount of compensation regardless of company performance. And absent a guaranteed payment arrangement, a partner's income relies solely on his or her share of business earnings, which leaves too much to change in some companies. Okay, And guaranteed payments are taxed as ordinary income to the partner and are deductible business expense to the partnership. It's very important, okay? And uh, one thing I want to say here is that the K-1 not only provides information about a partner's taxable income, but also gives the IRS an update on the partner's capital account, which is essentially the value of a partner's stake in the business. And a partner's share of company's debt is also listed on the K-1. So if you are filling out Schedule K-1 without tax software, make sure you download the Schedule K-1 that corresponds to Form 1065 because there's another one that has that corresponds to form 1120s because you don't want to be halfway through the form and suddenly re realize that you downloaded schedule k1 for s corporation shareholders okay and so this is important so when we talk about preparing schedule k1 be, sh be sure again if you if you uh, have no idea what i'm speaking about be sure to outsource the whole thing okay because partnerships are basically required to complete schedule k1 and this is important and be sure that you pay attention to what's really happening on the form and how each partner actually will uh, i mean the best way to do this is that as you are preparing the schedule k1 make sure that you inform the partners so they are aware of the amount you are you are reporting and that there is a constant communication loop between you the tax preparer and the partners of uh, the uh, i mean uh, the investors who have put their money into the partnership Don't forget to also talk about, don't forget state tax return. The thing is that Form 1065 is a federal thing, okay? Your state may require partnerships to file a state tax return. So depending on the state, partnerships may re be required to pay franchise, excise, or sales tax, okay? You can find the tax filing requirements for your state online at its Department of Revenue website. And don't forget personal tax returns. You need to file your personal tax return too. So if you are, let's say, let's say you are a general or limited partner, you must report your share of the partnership income or loss on your federal income tax return. And the Schedule K-1 you receive from the partnerships contains the information you need to do this. In addition, if you are a general partner, your partnership income will typically be considered self-employment income. So you will report this on your personal tax forms and calculate self-employment tax using Form SE. Very important. And uh, one thing that you need to remember is that because limited partners typically are not involved in running the business, their income is considered passive income. And if the partnership operates at a loss, they can only use that loss to offset other passive income. In addition, limited partners' income is not considered self-employment, except to the extent that they receive guaranteed payments for services they actually perform for the business partnership. So, filing business I mean, filing partnership taxes is a multi-step process and you may want to consult an accountant, an EA, I've said this before, a tax attorney, a CPA, or you want to invest in tax preparation software to help you complete your returns. To avoid late filing penalties, be sure to comply with federal and state filing deadlines. Okay. So when we speak about filing your individual return, the thing is that uh, you have to, I mean, you, you have not paid income taxes on you have not paid income taxes on your partnership income okay but with a schedule k1 your partnership provided to you you are ready to file your personal taxes so partnership income whether it came as a guaranteed payment or as a share of your business's profit is taxed as your at uh, your individual tax rate very important to remember so 
Business partners also pay 15.3% of their earnings in self-employment taxes. You need to file Schedule SE to calculate self-employment taxes. And so this is really important. Now remember, limited partners in a limited partnership, which, which actually differs from an LP, do not pay self-employment taxes on their share of a partnership profits. And again, if you don't know whether this applies to you, it probably doesn't. Thank you so much for your attention. In today's conversation, I was just speaking to you about filing partnership taxes for the first time this year. So I give you an, over, an overview. We spoke about keeping proper records, your financials, Form 1065, Schedule K, Schedules K-1, your state returns, and your personal returns. Thank you. God bless you. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.